Hello and welcome to the Friday, June 28th, 2024 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Stockheim, Germany. We got a diary today by one of our SANS EDU undergraduate interns, Kelly Fiocci Tabani, uh, did write about a honeypot they ran as part of the internship and, well, uh, some of the attacks they saw. Of course, if you run honeypots for a while, there is probably not a huge surprise here, but also the speed at which some of these highly automated attacks did evolve from a simple login via a weak username and password to essentially a complete takeover of the system if this would have been a real system. Luckily, of course, with honeypots, the attacker only gets the appearance of being successful. Not only did it only take 10 seconds for this entire attack to unfold, there were also several hundred attacks a day against a simple honeypot running within Amazon's cloud in this example. And TeamViewer announced that they experienced a compromise of their internal corporate IT environment on Wednesday, June 26, so a couple of days ago. Given the widespread use of TeamViewer and, of course, the sensitive nature of TeamViewer's access to users' desktops and systems, does make this, of course, a rather relevant event. There is not a lot of details known yet from TeamViewer. I'll link to their statement in the show notes. It's very brief. They do state that the product environment was completely independent of the comp compromised corporate IT environment. But remember, this just happened and uh, there's always a chance that uh, more parts of compromise will be discovered uh, sooner or well, later in the future. Current recommendation is to review your team viewer logs, make sure that there is no unusual activity. Try to reach out to team viewer if you do spot any unusual activity. At this point, I haven't heard from anybody who said that they think they were or their team viewer sessions or environment was uh, somehow compromised as part of this incident. And if you're using Fortas File Catalyst Workflow a product, it's urgent that you're patching the product. There is not only a new SQL injection vulnerability, but also a proof of concept ready to go for it thanks to Tenable. Forda did release a patch earlier this week. They also included some possible configuration changes you may apply that will mitigate the vulnerability. However, that involves to actually disable some of the vulnerable surflets. Another piece of software that needs your attention before the weekend is GitLab. A GitLab release an update fixing a number of important vulnerabilities. Uh, one of them uh, in particular uh, sticks out. It does allow one user to execute a continuous integration pipeline as another user. CVSS value here is 9.6. There is not a ton of detail here. However, there is some functionality that changed uh, with uh, the update and that sort of gives you a hint of what may be happening here and that's when you have sort of uh, two merge requests that uh, are being issued simultaneously where you first try to merge x into main but then you also try to merge a different branch y into x so uh, in doing so it's possible that whoever is trying to merge Y into X is able to execute a pipeline that uh, was sort of triggered by the first merge request. So in other words, there may be enough uh, detail here to allow a crafty attacker to come up with an exploit rather quickly. There's also some changes that were made to the authentication via GraphQL. And one of the attacks that's often being talked about with uh, large language models 
is a prompt injection. What a prompt injection really refers to is the ability of uh, the user to send a prompt to the system that will override some of the built-in security features. JFrog published a nice blog post about just such a prompt injection in vana.ai, which does lead to SQL injection. They're doing a real good job in also taking apart a little bit the problem of prompt injection. Often it's sort of a little bit more used like a prank, for example, where you're able to convince a system like ChatGPT to tell you how to build a Molotov cocktail by basically asking it not to tell you how to do it. A little bit like how you would sort of trick a three-year-old into doing something or telling you something they're not supposed to tell you. And that's about where some of these models are at. The tricky part here with the SQL injection comes to play because Vana.ai is actually built to create SQL queries. Now, this of course is always dangerous and the trick being played here is sort of your classic SQL injection trick where you're providing part of the SQL statement that will then be inserted into the SQL statement just as user data. Of course, I probably can hear someone cry out here talking about uh, prepared statements and such. This doesn't quite apply here because the code is kind of supposed to create arbitrary SQL code, of course, within some guardrails. The fix here is actually not a fix for the SQL injection problem, but instead just limiting permissions in order to prevent malicious SQL queries from just failing based on not having the necessary privileges. Well, and this is it for today. And this is also the last podcast until July 8th. There will be no podcast next week due to travel, a couple other events, uh, Fourth of July holiday and such. So wouldn't really work out to do a podcast next week. And that's why I'll wait till July 8th for the next podcast. Thanks for listening. Thanks for liking and commenting on the podcast. If you have any stories that I missed or such, please you know, send me an email or comment via the Internet Storm Center's comment form. And thanks and talk to you again on Monday, July 8th.